Hey game makers! Today we'll be looking at some awesome, yet simple, RPG maker tips and tricks that I've discovered over the years. Most of these will be things that I think are cool, practical, or useful to know. Maps. Don't... just... please don't make your maps look like this. You don't need to be a pro mapper to make a game, but some things to keep in mind are maps do not need to be unnecessarily big and spacious, especially interiors. Given, there are maps that do need to be like this, but something like a simple house interior usually doesn't need to be one big giant room that fits the screen size. I'm actually ringing this up because I used to do this a lot. Additionally, maps also shouldn't be incredibly cramped and crowded looking. It's good to make the maps look as detailed as you can, but it's also bad to overshoot it. The key point here is to make it look interesting. I'd also suggest looking up references from other RPGs to see how it's done. While on the topic of maps, did you know you can hold the shift key on your keyboard to use only the center of an auto tile? This can also be achieved by drawing the auto tile in a 3x3 or more box on their map and right clicking it. You can also right click and drag your mouse to select more than just one tile. If the edges of a parallax map are looping, it's because the map is smaller than the screen resolution and the parallax background is repeating. Use an event to change the parallax to none to fix this, or just make your map parallax bigger. If your plugins are not working, check for updates. If that doesn't work, it could be because the plugin is conflicting with another. Move the plugin that's not working below all of your other plugins. If that doesn't fix it, turn all of your other plugins off. And if it is still not working, go and ask an unsuspecting YouTuber how to magic it to work. Using a picture as lighting can completely change how your maps look. Here, we've got a sort of moonlight picture in the top left, and a dark faded outline around the screen. Just a couple of gradients can make your map look completely different. The lantern effect. You're in a dark cave, you want some light. Create a parallel event. Have two variables, one set to equal the player's screen X coordinate and the other for the player's screen Y coordinate. Then show the picture. All you need is an image of a little circle of light, preferably big enough to fit around your character. Show the image, set it to center, and set the X, Y variables at the bottom as the screen player X and Y once we just set. This will make the light follow the player. I'm also adding in the dark outlining image I mentioned earlier, on a different event to make it look better. Beware of NPCs blocking your path! <laughs> if you're going to use one tile wide walkways, NPCs will be able to block you. If you prefer one tile wide walkways like I do, you might want to look into something of an NPC pushing out of the way plugin. In the previous RPG makers, you could just block both exits off with a blank event, as events didn't walk over blank events. But they do now, for some reason. Why? Why must you take out all the features I think are cool? Nothing makes a cutscene more interesting like the character is actually doing something instead of standing there looking pretty and talking about plot. Now, you don't need to do this for every cutscene ever, but you can convey a character's personality by their actions during a scene, as well as their dialogue. Plus, it makes it more visually interesting to look at. What I mean by this is, if a character is talking, have them looking at who they're talking to. If something dramatic is going on, have the characters walk to each other or react to what's going on. In the example I'm showing you, it's just a fun little conversation, but using move routes, those kind of awkward balloon animation thingies, and just trying to make the characters actually feel like they're interacting with each other, it gives off a much more interesting and character-driven vibe as compared to this, in which I removed all of the extras and just left the dialogue. If sprite-based cutscenes aren't really your thing, there's also a more streamlined use of bust graphics, where you focus on full artish images of your characters to represent the scene instead of their sprites. Or why not use both? If base graphics are your thing, it might be wise to have different images for different emotions. It's always nice to see a character's emotions, and it nulls out the possibility for something epic and serious to be going on, and your character just smiling like a dummy dummy. I mean, really, if you're going out of your way to put in face graphics, make them good and not thrown in static images that feel out of place. My gripe here isn't actually with RM games, but all the old school Final Fantasy GBA ports that insisted on using jarringly inconsistent face graphics. Rage. For cutscenes, and pretty much anything, a nice little addition would be any of the visual options. That is, things like the balloons, animations, screen fades, screen tones, flashes, shakes, and the ability to control the weather. On the topic of weather, 
MV doesn't show weather effects in battle by default, for some reason. But luckily, there's an awesome plugin by Himeworks that adds it in. There'll be a link in the description, so make sure and go get all of that awesomeness now! MV's default selection of music is rather good all things considered. Think carefully about choosing music for a scene or area, because the feel of the music will come across to the player. Using music alone, you could make a good scene turn into a great scene just with the right song pick. If you need the game to remember a song, use Save BGM before you change the song, and then replay BGM to restart it again. If you're doing a game with voice acting, have each voice clip set as a sound effect. Before the dialogue, stop the previous sound effect and then play the voice clip. Hello, do you need something from me? Um, are you not gonna say anything? Can't you talk? Do, do you just wanna listen to me talk then? That's a little weird, but okay. I had a dream about my first adventure the other day. It was exciting. Though it wasn't all fun and games at the time. Actually, it was around then when I first met. N never mind, I'm sure you're not interested. You are? Well, well, okay. I'll tell you. I changed my mind. It's embarrassing. Why are you laughing at me? Jeez. Movies must be the file types dot webm for PC, and .mp4 for mobile. I have a tutorial on video converting for VXAce, but you can use it the exact same way, except selecting the new file types instead. When you play a movie in MV, the game still processes behind it. So you can open the menu, walk around, re-talk to the video event, etc. I'd advise playing them on autorun or putting in wait commands after it to get it to work right. If you need to relocate events on a map, Use set event locations. This is good if you're doing a lot of scenes with the same characters on the map. When you need them again, just set them in their new spots. This helps to not have multiple copies of a specific character on the same map. Something a lot of RM makers do is neglect the formations option in the menu. It lets you switch your party around. If the player does that and walks into a cutscene without you changing the graphic back, you'll have two of someone show up. <laughs> a great way to get around this is have all of your player characters as events set to turn on with a switch. When you walk into the cutscene, set your event characters at that location, have your followers walk into the player, set the player to transparent, and turn off the followers. Lastly, turn on the switch. When using events like this, the camera won't follow them. However, we can achieve this by using the Camera Scroll X plugin, which has a nice little feature to allow the camera to follow any event, as well as some other cool stuff. Have it follow the player character event, and you're good. I ignore the screen shaking. It's not usually like that. This plugin was really hating on my recorder, apparently. Alternatively, you could just change all of their graphics to the main character in a common event, and then change them back when the scene is over. I'm in a cave. A cave shouldn't be square. Unless it is, in which case, yay square caves! But if you're making dungeons, particularly something more on the organic side, try to avoid having too many straight looking walls. And I know, MV's graphics aren't really designed with super pretty high class stuff in mind, but even just adding some extra curves, juts, rocks, interest to the look will make the dungeon ten times more epic. Don't disable saving from the menu. I mean, if your game's pretty much finished, you've had some people play it, and you really, really want to disable saving, that's totally fine. But if you're still working on it, or still testing it, don't disable saving. There's nothing more annoying than playing through a 40 minute dungeon, finding an unknown bug at the end, and having the game crash without having saved all that time. That goes for the game devs testing and the players. I know, I've been there on both ends. This should also apply even if you're already using save points. Keep both for testing. As game makers, we create our game and test them. We go from point A to point B and make sure it works. We do not spend 20 minutes wandering around a dungeon trying to figure out where to go. We just go there because we know to go there. This is where random encounter rates come in. And I'm incredibly guilty of this in my first game. The default 30 steps is, in my opinion, completely insane. <laughs> Especially with auto dash on. And it's something a lot of RPGM game devs don't think about, because they didn't have to wander through the map, so it doesn't feel like a lot. Plus, if you hold control in test mode, you can walk through walls and disable encounters. Now, it depends on your game, and the style, and what have you, but I generally find 50 to 70 steps for a large map usually works. 
Additionally, if you're doing save points, it might be a good idea to put in smaller maps nearby that have increased encounter rates, so if the player needs to go level grind, they have a quick place to do it at. Make your NPCs interesting! It's cool to have some here and there that are the generic, Welcome to my town, here's the plot, go do something about it! But NPCs can do a lot to expand your game world. If done right, NPCs can have lives and actually make you care about them. Making memorable NPCs is probably one of the biggest and most random achievements I can think of as a game designer. Now, not every NPC has to be a novel worth of their life story, but a few plot-related NPCs are good too. Start small, dream big. Your first game will not be your best. It might not even be good, but it will be something you made. It will be awesome, and you will be proud of it. So keep game making and your next project will be even better! If you'd like another tips and tricks video, let me know in the comments! Until next time, see you later gamers!